Wow. So it's a, it's a free saw, table saw, like a free puppy, maybe. <laughs> this one, uh, I was going to clean it up today and show it to you, and unfortunately, uh, yesterday we tried something, and we found out that, yeah, this is going to be one of those free puppy deals where things start to cost time and money or whatever to repair. She needs some work, but, uh, hi baby. Yep. Speaking of free puppies, yeah, there you go. This is our new member of the family. Uh, it's a dog rescue, so I'm really happy with her so far. She's uh, really something else. She's pretty special, aren't you? Yes, you're very special. And uh, so we're going to get in the table saw today, but it's not what you think. Okay, yeah, it's it's worse than that. Let's go. So yesterday, uh, I had planned on shooting this show today about cleaning this table saw up, and I thought, you know, probably since we got it uh, so interestingly cheap, I thought I'll plug it in and just check the motor, make sure the motor's okay, because really everything else could be cleaned or oiled or, you know, whatever, or maybe some bearings replaced, whatever's wrong, but we'll clean her up and get her going. But the motor's number one. you got to have a motor on a table saw or what's, what's the rest of it? So, anyways, yesterday, uh, on Sunday, I decided I would plug this in, and here's, here's the deal. Apparently, the motor isn't any good the way it is. The good news was the motor uh, hummed, and the, the blade kind of jumped a little bit. So that indicates that at least there's no start circuit working for the motor to you know, get started, which could be capacitor or it could be the... Uh, the centrifugal switch that goes from start windings to run windings. And so we'll take a look at all that. Uh, only one way to do it, I'm going to pull the motor. <laughs> so in here is a big bad motor. It's 110 or two, two, uh, 220 volt motor, single phase. Well, there it is. Uh, I've got it out, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take an air blower and just clean this off. It's a good possibility that just the capacitors or something are gone, but we got to take it apart. So uh, I just wanted to see, you know, just wanted to show you what was involved. This cabinet here is really interesting. I put a piece of two by four underneath it, across the bottom, rested the motor on that, took the four bolts off, 13 millimeter heads, and really wasn't anything to it. So let's get her cleaned up so I can get her apart. I thought I would check the capacitors before we got too far down the road with this thing. And so I pulled the first capacitor off and it looked okay. There's, what I was looking for was oil residue, fluid, any kind of leakage, uh, heat marks, uh, anything crazy with the capacitor. I just pulled the second one off. And you will not believe. My God, you will not believe what I just found. I'm going to close the camera. I'm going to bring the camera real close so you can see this. And... I have no idea. This is, I have, I have this is new. I, I've only seen this one other time and it was more than, and that was close to 40 years ago. But um, I, I can't even understand what I'm looking at right now. This is just, wow. Guys, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share the what the today. Cause if that's all that's holding this motor up, that's, you know, that's pretty crazy. Let's take a look at it, and let's see if I can get you over here. Yeah, all right. Ah, okay. So, here we go. Are you ready for this? Yeah. So, here's what we're looking at. I just pulled this off, pulled the rubber off, and then right there, see the screw right across these two leads? I mean, it doesn't make any sense because the question there would be, how did that even get in there? So now I have to set up a test, I guess, and run the motor again just to make sure that that's, if this is all that's holding up the job, which it sure looks like, and it's jammed in there pretty good. What are the chances? I mean, you know, really? <laughs> you, you remember, you saw this at Coffee and Tools. I just, uh, I'm in shock. But we'll take the screw away, capacitor, and then we'll, we'll have to restart or do
do a quick electrical test on the motor and just see if the motor runs at that point because yeah i would hold it up Jesus. all right we'll be right back i don't know if you can see this because the lighting in here today is monstrous but uh, there's the motor it wouldn't run <laughs> fixed it yay but the question now is how did that screw even get in there because these are wrapped against the motor fairly tight and I'm glad I fixed it it's real simple it was obviously that was the cheapest fix ever <laughs> finding a screw shorting across the terminals there's no screw missing on the motor so this could go all the way back to the assembly of the motor when it was new or something, maybe. I, I, I just... My mind is blown <laughs> today. Wow. So now, i got to put this heavy, ugly bear, I guess, back in the cabinet after we clean it up a little. I'm going to clean it up a little more. Uh, probably going to... I don't have to do it today, but I will be changing it over to a 240 uh, volt uh, power supply because... The, there's no reason to keep this motor on 110. 110 is a little, um, well, it's just hard on electricity compared to 240 because you don't have the heat, of course, and the cable and stuff to deal with. And you can get away with pretty light duty uh, cable at that point because it's half the, half the current. You're running about 7.5 amps instead of 15 through the motor. Uh, might even clean this up a little bit while I've got it out, I guess, and polish it. Maybe even paint it or something. But uh, I'll tell you what, I'm, this is. My, my mind is blown, guys. I'm just, you know, this was not what I expected to, I was, I even marked this, this this morning because I, with a scratch, so when I separate the two pieces, we can relocate the front here back in. I figured we were going to be pulling this whole motor apart to get in there to find out, you know, what's wrong with this motor. And, no, but the question now is, is, Where'd the screw come from? How long has the screw been in there? Uh, I don't know. Let's clean her up and roll, roll back from there. Okay, so, so now we have the task here. I've put the motor back in place with a 2x4 to support it for the time being. I guess we'll get the... Uh, I should probably should buy a new belt. Actually, this belt looks like it's okay, but... Yeah, it's not dry rotted or cracked or anything. But the, uh, gotta get the bolts back in, get this all hooked back up, and, and then we can get to the next part of oiling and cleaning, and I gotta blow all this thing out. So, uh, that's just, I just wanted to let you guys know, this is where we're at, putting the motor back together, putting it back in the saw. Oh, I can't believe it, that screw, that is just, guys, my mind is blown. <laughs> mind is, mind is, that was impossible. <laughs> But sometimes our lives seem impossible with this. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Okay, I'm going to stop again with the camera. When we come back, I'll have this all bolted up, and we'll get to the next part of the uh, fun with this thing. Okay, just for anybody's reference, that big nut on the arbor on this thing, 7 8 okay? Yeah, it's not metric, that part, at least. I don't think it is. There you go. All right, there we go, and the nut is off, a no-brainer, okay. and there's our, let's see, oh, yeah, real expensive, not very, well, 24 teeth, 10 inch, table saw blade, recommended for tie table saws, okay, so we'll set all this aside, wow, never seen that before, that's, that's interesting. Now we have a little more access to uh, seeing the bearings and I'm thinking uh, first thing I need to do is just loosen everything up but I really need to just clean all the sawdust out of here so I'm going to put it out in the driveway here and we're just going to blow it and make, a, make like a sandstorm from uh, Arizona. Mm. Oh, wow. It looks better already. <laughs> All right, that was phase one of the blowjob. Wow. 
that was the uh, that was the first part of uh, of this mess was to just take the leaf blower and just get all the he heavy stuff except the mud daubers and that's a that's a creature of the south that is absolutely hated they build mud nests uh, up inside anything and especially a table saw is a great place for a mud dauber to you know build the whole saw is um, mechanically frozen so I'm going to take a airline and blow all the little pieces uh, first and then we're I think we're gonna have to soak her with some uh, okay penetrating oil but what I'm going to use unfortunately is WD-40 I'm not even that fussy on WD-40 but that's what I'm going that's what I'm going to use is uh, WD okay so just so you guys can see what's going on here this is a bit of a mess but uh, everything is rusted and frozen inside so yeah nothing's moving right now and what I'm gonna do is take an airline and blow stuff like these little areas here get all the heavy rust I can with the airline just kind of blow everything heavy out and then come back I'm gonna soak the whole thing in probably WD-40 and then bump around I'll also put maybe a little bit of lithium grease on some of these even if I can the problem is uh, as, as you can well imagine a saw like this lives in a uh, sawdust environment and dust and stuff just flying so you can't really heavy grease it like you can on a you know a bearing for a car or something like that it's like th this is just not that situation you really need almost a dry lube or something that doesn't attract uh, sawdust and I have a dry lube here but I'm not going to use that today right now I just want to get this whole thing freed up and moving uh, to where it's you know everything's going but the next step is the airline we're going to give it a blow with the airline on all the small parts and then we're going to come back with the uh, penetrating oils all right all right does it look does it look familiar <laughs> yeah i gotta get some glasses on yeah. we're outside but it might still be bad enough i may have to get a mask or something but let's see what we got Okay, just before we close out, everything is freed up after the WD-40. I also threw some uh, white lithium grease on everything, soaked it real good, wiped everything down with rags afterwards, and it's, it's freed up, it's good to go. The, uh... So, I just thought I'd let you know that before we, uh, like I said, we're gonna end the show at this point, because. There was a lot of different little work and quirkies and nuts and bolt things involved, but let's do the, let's get to the end of this. Uh, thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, and thank you so much for the views. Uh, this has just been another one of those uh, projects. The screw in the motor this morning, I guess that was, that <laughs> just did me in. Oh, wow, I'm still, I had to make some phone calls and tell everybody else about the news and go, you're not going to believe, but <laughs> uh, over and out.